Good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you for attending today's webinar. Um, today we're going to be talking about resistant red-legged earth mites, the status in WA. The talk will be given by Svetlana, our entomologist from the Department of Ag and Food in Albany. Svet, would you like to start? Currently in Western Australia, red-legged earth mites are one of the most damaging crop pests, especially of, of canola if they are not controlled. Red-legged earth mites do occur with another mite called the blue oak mite and they can be confused. Red-legged earth mites have a black body with red legs, whereas the blue oak mite also has a black body and red legs, but it has a red dot on its backside and is easily differentiated from a red-legged earth mite. Over the years, red-legged earth mites and blue oak mites have been very easily controlled by synthetic pyrethroids, especially as they've become very inexpensive and can cost as little as a dollar a hectare to control these mites. However, in recent years we've had red-legged earth mites which have developed resistance to synthetic pyrethroids. This was first found in 2006 in a property in Esperance. Now, if these mites from 2006 to 2012 were tested every year and were found to still be resistant. Surveys that were conducted um, in the eastern states found no resistance to synthetic pyrethroids in red-legged earth mites there, but currently from surveys conducted between 2006 and 2014, we've now got 49 properties with red-legged earth mites that were found to be resistant to synthetic pyrethroids from Esperance to Bajangara. The resistance to red-legged earth mites is widespread from Esperance, as you can see from this map, all the way through the south of Stirlings and north of Perth at Bajangara. Now, these red-legged earth mites are resistant to all synthetic pyrethroids at all rates. We also found in 2014 a single population of red-legged earth mites which were resistant to synthetic, to synthetic pyrethroids and omethoate. We will talk about this property at Capel a little later. As you can see, we have tested many properties from Esperance to north of Geraldton. The ones in blue are the ones that we did not detect any synthetic pyrethroid resistant red-legged earth mites. Now, we go to a property and we'll only collect from one or two places on that property and it's, yes, look, we could have missed some of these. Um, however, you can see that there are, are clusters um, in Esperance, South Stirlings, where there seems to be properties that are clustered which have resistant red legs. As you can see at site 9, we sampled every 100 metres along the fence line. So for 600 metres, we had resistant red-legged earth mites. At the 700 metre, we suddenly got susceptible which suggests that resistant red-legged earth mites can move along fence lines. However, the blue lines on this map are all uh, paddock boundaries. So if you go to site 33, you can see that for 600 metres, we had resistant red-legged earth mites. At the 700th metre, we had susceptible red-legged earth mites. Studies from at the University of Melbourne suggest that the mites at site 33 and the mites at site 9 are actually genetically distinct. So that means that the resistance is an independent event at both of these sites. So what it does suggest is that the mites are not actually moving between properties unless there is a shared property boundary. Um, if a property has resistance at Esperance, it's unlikely that the resistance is spread to the neighbour unless they share a property boundary. So it all comes down to what you're doing on your particular property and what we're finding is that there are some paddocks that don't have a spray history, like they've had no SPs used and we're finding resistant red-legged earth mites and that's because of the shared property boundary. So we do have mites moving along fence lines. So controlling weeds along fence lines will stop mite move. Now you might remember about at Capel where we said we had omethoate resistance. Well, independent 
surveys conducted by CESA at the University of Melbourne have found that these capel mites were 30 times more tolerant to omethoate than the South Perth population. And you can see here where we looked at different rates. We exposed the capel population to different rates of omethoate and the South Perth population of red legged earth mites to different rates of um, omethoate. You can see at 0.35 grams AI per litre is what it, what it took to kill the capel population, whereas it was only at very minor lower rates to kill the South Perth population. The interesting thing about this capel population is that it does not have a history of omethoate sprays. It has a five-year history of the application of dimethoate. Um, however, in 2014, uh, spray failures occurred because uh, when 200 mils of omethoate per hectare were applied um, three times and mites survived. Now, what most of you probably don't know is that dimethoate in its breakdown cycle does break down into omethoate. Now, surveys conducted in 2014, we did find that there were that there was more than one site in the southern part of the state where we did have red-legged earth mites surviving rates of omethoate. However, we didn't know if the omethoate tolerance was going to be heritable. Um, initial results from this year, 2015, suggest that omethoate tolerance is heritable because we're still finding at that capable population red-legged earth mites that are surviving higher rates of omethoate and we will be increasing our testing this year. It is concerning that we are having that we are detecting omethoate tolerance because for the control of red-legged earth mites, we've only got two chemical groups which are re registered: the organophosphates and the pyrethroids. So, if you're resistant to the synthetic pyrethroids, it, your red-legged earth mites are resistant to the synthetic pyrethroids. It's all synthetic pyrethroids. At the moment, we're only finding tolerance in the omethoate from the organophosphate range, um, and in and when we did test the capel mites against other chemicals in the organophosphate group, we found that they were susceptible to chemicals such as chlorpyrifos. However, it does show that we are very limited chemicals for the control of red-legged earth mites, and if mites are damaging a crop, the only thing you can do is spray. But we do need to look at other ways of managing red-legged earth mites. So so that we can decrease the need to apply insecticides. And that's not just to decrease the need to apply insecticides against red-legged earth mites, because we do know from surveys conducted that the red-legged earth mites receive a dose of insecticide any time a pest is sprayed in a paddock. So if you are spraying for aphids or for um, diamondback moth, or some caterpillar pests, consider what your chemical options are and maybe use a chemical group that the red-legged earth mites are not showing resistance to. And alternatively, also look at decreasing your need to apply insecticides for the control of pests such as red-legged earth mites by looking at planting susceptible crops such as canola maybe after a cereal rather than a pasture and making sure that the cereal crop in the year before you plant canola is, is weed free. And similarly, if you are going to plant canola after a pasture, consider grazing the pasture and also only using time right in the year you're going to crop your pasture paddocks uh, to, to decrease your risk of omethoate tolerance developing, it's probably a good idea to only use Time Right, which is a spray applied for the control of red-legged earth mites in September. Consider only using Time Right, a spray in spring to stop female red-legged earth mites from dying with diapaws eggs inside them. Consider only using that if you have to and not every year. This year in 2015, we will be increasing the tests that we're doing for omethoate tolerance and we are also going to be screening for resistance in red-legged earth mites to synthetic pyrethroids. If you are noticing red-legged earth mites present in a paddock 
that you think should have low numbers because you've applied an insecticide, or you're noticing red-legged earth mites, especially in crop patches where there's non-wetting sands. This is unlikely to be because the chemicals haven't worked. It's probably um, an indication that you've got resistance. Contact us. It's a good idea to know if you do have resistance because if you're tank mixing an OP and an SP, it could be that you're actually leading yourself to have more resistance occurring in the paddock for red-legged earth mites. Thank you very much.